Hey guys, it's Colin from the Dynamic Beaver here, and today I'm going to show you a new module that's been released by the guys over at Beaver Add-ons. It's called the Modal Box module, and it's actually a pop-up maker. So, first one for Beaver Builder that I know of, and it looks really good, and I'm going to give you a quick demo of that and show you how to use it. There will be some more to come on it, because it is quite an extensive demo, and I probably can't get it all squeezed into one tutorial here. So, today I'm going to show you how to insert a form that pops up when you click on a button or click on a text link. Anyway, just going to pop over here to Beaver Add-ons and show you what's going on. So, they've got a great plugin for Beaver Builder with tons of modules and if we go to the demo here you'll see a whole bunch of them pop up here and everything from styling gravity forms to contact form 7 they've added uh, just recently today actually I, I believe uh, formidable forms the WP forms and also the Caldera forms so pretty much covered all the form companies out there and you can style those from the Beaver Builder modules I think that's an awesome addition to Beaver Builder. The one that I'm going to concentrate on today is the modal module, which is uh, the modal box module, which is this one here. But I'm going to come back to that in a second. I just want to quickly just show you their blog. I believe that they do have a giveaway on right now. So if you see this, it goes to the blog. You'll see the giveaway here. They're giving away four licenses, two lifetime and two annual or two yearly licenses uh, for power pack I think that's awesome you don't have to buy anything to enter but I believe that they're also including existing purchases in there so I think two people from the existing purchases get to win their money back anyway uh, head on over to the blog I'll put the link below and uh, get in on your chance to win a copy of power pack so let's go back to quickly the demo page here and give you a quick overview of what the modal box looks like on the power pack demo site and if we just scroll down here's the modal box so I'm just going to click on view demo it's going to open up in a new tab and essentially there we go there's a pop-up that's come in that's a timed pop-up that comes in after a certain amount of time and I'm guessing that's probably about three or four seconds so I'm just going to close that but you, what you've got here is you've got fixed sized video so you can play videos inside a pop-up like this so I'm just going to play that there you go so that's a video playing in there uh, you can go to a full screen version of that as well. So if I click on this one, there's a full screen image with some content in it, but you can also have videos full screen. And then you've got one down here for a form pop up, something like that. That's a gravity form that's in there, but you can put a contact form seven, formidable, any type of form in that box. So that's the demo on the Beaver add ons site. Uh, but I'm going to head over to my demo site now and actually show you how to use it. So what you've just noticed there is a, an exit intent. So just as I'm moving away, it said, hey, uh, come back and grab my stuff before I leave. It's actually a really cool marketing ploy to get someone's attention as they're leaving your site. So I'm going to click exit on that one. I'm going to head over to my demo site here. So I've got the theme already set up here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to add a modal box and show you exactly all the features and stuff in it. So let's get going. Click on Page Builder and we'll let that load up. And then we'll go down to the Power Pack modules and we'll scroll down to the modal box. And there it is. So as you can see, there are a lot of options there for you to add new content to Beaver Builder. Anyway, so I'm going to grab the modal box for now drag it out here. I'm going to put it in between that title and also the button there. So this is what you get when you first open it up. There is a preview in the background, so that's why I've moved the box over here. Right now there's no nothing there, so uh, we can't display anything. But what I'm going to do is go through the settings. So essentially we've got uh, the modal here, we've got our layout, we've got standard, which is a box, a pop-up, or we've got full screen. So if I click on full screen, it will actually you know uh, pop up that to a full screen type pop-up and because I'm in the box layout I've got the option to set the width and I've got the width set to default by 550 pixels okay now the height is also set to uh, auto which is good because it will actually just stretch out to the content inside your box if you wanted to fix that height you can just click no here and then you get the option of the height okay so I'm gonna click on yes there you can see the 450 is updated so I'm gonna go back to yes it will auto height it will reduce back down and then you've got the option of showing the preview or not to show the preview I, I think it's a good idea to see the preview you can see your pop-up being built as you're building it the next one down is the content so we've got a title area here I don't know if you can see the one pixel border there above that is the title area so we've got the option to enable it or disable it and if we put a title in here you know something like get in touch because that's what we're going to do on this one there we go you can see the title up here 
then the type of content that we're going to put into the modal box. So there's photo, so you can just bring a photo in from your media library. You can insert a video. That's going to ask you for the shortcode or the link to that video. You've got URL, which enables you to put in content from another web page or another website just put the url in there content is your normal content to editing box okay raw html will give you a code box to put raw html in and save templates actually enables you to put any of your beaver builder save templates in there and i'm going to show you how to use that in another video because it, it does take a little bit of time so what i'm going to do today is i'm going to put the content as a type okay and what i'm going to do i'm going to go and choose one of my forms and i do have a formidable form already set up in here and i'm going to choose that highlight the short code copy it and then paste it into my box here now because it's i've just pasted the short code in here the editor doesn't actually know that it's a short code so i'm going to click on save and then i'm going to come back in to the modal and you'll see the form appear and uh, one second there, so we'll just drag this over. There's the form in the background. Pretty cool, eh? So that's the formidable form. All I'm asking for is a name and an email. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is just come down here. So that's the general tab covered. We're going to go over to settings. And in the settings, I have the options of how I want this to be triggered. So the auto enables you to have it pop up automatically after a set amount of time so on landing on your page. The default is one second, but you can set this to however many seconds you want. If you want to, your reader to be engaged, probably a good idea to put this like 10 or 15 seconds so that they're actually engaged in your content before the pop-up comes in. It's kind of annoying to have it pop up straight away. Just a little tip there. The next option over here is on click. So this option gives you the, the button option. You can see it's just peered over there. And also you could have an image. So you can just have an image that you can click on or an icon. I'm going to leave it at button for now. Okay. Now, because we've got button, you notice that the button style tab has appeared here magically. That's pretty cool. And then obviously on the button, we've got the click here text. We can also add an icon. And then if we can choose to put the icon before or after the text. So I'm just going to leave everything there. I'm not going to change the button as it is. And then down here, we've got our exit settings. So this basically covers how our users can exit the modal or the pop-up. First of all, they've got the X to click on. They can then click on escape on their keyboard, which will exit, close it. And then also they can click anywhere around the outside to exit too. So you've got the options to turn those on or off. Okay, so if we go to the next tab, which is our button style, this enables us to set all the styles of our button, which is over here. And I'm just going to leave everything default, but you can essentially, you know, create your own style for the button. You can have transparent buttons, you can have borders and everything else. So all the options are here. You can also change opacity, but for the sake of this video, I'm just going to leave this button as is. Okay. And you can see all the options are here for every type of button that you can think of. So that's good. Next tab is the modal style. So this is actually where we get to style the colors and borders and backgrounds and everything else of this box okay so the first section is the title and the font it, you've got the choice of uh, you know your default fonts set for your theme and then you can go through and override them with all the google fonts there i'm just going to leave it at default for now you've got the option to change the size i'm just going to change it to 24 pixels okay as you can see it's 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 grown in size there the color you know what i'm going to do i'm going to add a bit of style to this so i'm going to change it to white disappears but then on the background color i'm going to add a blue and we're going to have a nice there we go that's a nice contrast we've got there there's a border on the bottom if i actually just put a zero there you can see the border now you can change that to dashed if you want okay or solid and you can obviously change the color so if i had you know, i can put a red border there like that i will leave that like that for now i'll probably just put it a little bit thinner and just to show the style now the side padding is still up in the title area here and this enables you to put some padding on the side so if i change this for to 55 you'll see that i've stretched in there but i'm going to leave it at 15 and the reason that's because i'm going to center that on top of there like that there we go so that's the center option you've also got right aligned as well next section is the background so the background is actually this white area here okay and right now we've got it set to white so if i choose a different color and we'll go to 
Wow, not very good colors here. Let's go with that yellow. There you go. Now you can see that the background color has changed. Okay, so I'll leave it on background color. You do have an image option. I'm com coming back in a minute to show you that. Uh, okay, you can change the opacity of that. So if you want it to actually show through a little bit, you can change the value of the opacity. And the backlight effect really only works with images, so there's no point in showing you that quite yet. The next section is the border. So the border around your content box here and if I put that to solid you will see a border pop up in a second so this is the one that's all the way around the box and if I change that to 10 and we change it there you can you can see I'll put it to red so you can see it so that's the one all the way around the box okay I'm gonna put that back to uh, non I'm not gonna have a border on this one so click that and the padding next is, actually, you know what? If I put that border back, I'll show you what the padding is. So we're gonna put that back. We've got 10 and the border position. The default is all the way around, but you can choose top, bottom, left, or right as options. I've got the option to round the corners of the borders. So if I put this to something like 15, you'll see the corners round off a little bit there. Okay, but I'm gonna take that back to something like two. Now the padding will enable you to pad your content in a little bit so if I change this to something that's obvious like 40 you can see that now I've got some padding and stretching things in I'm going to take that back to 10 there we go and the enable shadow will give you a shadow effect on the whole box and once you actually enable that what happens is you get the options to set the shadow so box shadow so if I put five here and five here you won't see that so much on this background I've got right now but there is a five and five shadow there I'm gonna leave that where it is you can change the color of the shadow and the opacity there so next one we've got is the border for the contents and that's essentially inside here so if I put on solid okay and you'll see now we've got a border inside it here that's pretty cool and I like that it's an extra effect that you know you don't imagine you'll get but <clears throat> it's actually been added you can also add a border radius and you can also change the text color. Now, I believe that that will change the name and email color that I've got there. So if I just drag this up to white, and this is actually a form that's designed by Formidable, and I like that. Wow, that gives me an override, really cool. I'm gonna exit for a second, I'm gonna leave it on black. And then this padding here is the padding that's between the border and the outside there. So if I increase this to 30, you'll see bigger gap there so this is the the padding between here and there okay so that's cool I'm gonna put that back to 10 there we go perfect the overlay is the background color so right now it's black and you can see I've got it set to you know 0.8 opacity if I put that down to 0.2 you'll see my background come through and you can obviously change the color as well so if I change that back up to 0.8 and change that to you know something that's blue for example now you can see that the background color has changed so you have the option I like uh, to leave that on black it blocks out the content in the background so the focus really is on your pop-up or your modal box okay and then the options you've got next are for this close button here and there are tons of options you can either show or hide it probably a good idea to leave it you can change the color right now it's gray I'm just gonna make that white okay I can change the background color this will actually put a little square around it like that okay and I got the hover color for the background if I want to I can add some radius to that so I can make it round I can also make this bigger so <laughs> like that and then I can also change the weight so make it thicker so you can see that that comes in there like that the border radius will actually put a little bit of roundness on this so if I put it to 10 you can see it rounds it off okay so there's so many options here I can change the position to the to the top left top right so if I move that over there it'll go to the left you can also put it on the outside of the box which would be up here anyway I'm gonna reset that down because I don't like that so I'm gonna set it down to 20 and I'm probably just gonna get rid of the background color and have a white one maybe we'll make it 30 and it will update in a second we've got the all the options there and the next one we've got so oh you can move it actually I forgot this one here so you can move it up and down so if I do that you'll see it move down 20 pixels sometimes you just got to actually wait for this to update I'm gonna press enter and it will push down in a minute if I click save we'll come back into it there you go it did it right at the second there if it doesn't update straight away then just uh, click on save and come back in 
and you'll see it that uh, it's there pop down so I don't want it that far down I want it to be uh, where am I now so I'm on the box I'm on the overlay the close button uh, the size down there the top margin I'm gonna put that back to 10 okay and when you save it they'll actually go back up there that this doesn't seem to be an auto update for that section now the last bit on here is a responsive so this is the breakpoint where this box will actually go to full screen and so anything at 768 pixels or less the pop-up will cover the whole screen so you can change that if you want for mobiles if you want it just for phones then probably a good idea to set that at like 480 pixels okay so next section and penultimate section is the animation so we got all types of animation effects for this to come in and so if I put it on shake when it actually appears it will shake in there like that and so I'm just gonna have that fade in I'm not gonna shake people's attention there and you've got the option to on the out as well so as it goes out it will actually shake or rattle or slide in slide out and you, you can play around with those options and the events tab is essentially all the normal advanced options you have in there so right now I'm gonna go back to my settings I've got this on click I'm gonna click save one thing I was going to do was going to move the button because it's all the way over there right now. I'm going to move the button to the center, okay, because it's right over on the left. So now it's centered. I'm going to click save. I'm going to click done. And I'm going to publish my changes. So now we've got two buttons, okay, and you can see that this is the button I've just added. If I click on it, there comes my pop up. Okay, I can put in my information. The, me the confirmation message will come up or it will send you to a confirmation page, but I'm going to click on exit out of there. Uh, now, what if I didn't want to add a button and I just wanted to add this to a button I've got somewhere else or maybe a text link? Well, the guys over at Beaver Add-ons have come up with a really cool way of doing this. So I'm just going to go back in really quickly and show you what they've done to get around that. So I've already got a button right here that I want to use, okay? And I want to pop up on that. So if I go back into my modal again, I will go over here to my settings and on here I've got the option of other okay so if I actually highlight this copy it okay click Save what it's going to do is now there's going to be a space here so that when you're in the admin you know where it is I'm going to click on this button here and if I go to advanced and add this I've already done it earlier on my test run through here add that modal button there or that custom class should I say for the modal button and save what will happen now is click done publish changes and you won't see the modal here where it was before there's no button but if I click on this button watch this Wow isn't that cool so you can also put that into a text link or on any beaver builder module you can add that so that if there's a click on that module or if it loads the custom class will actually come in and create that modal for you so that is essentially an introduction to the modal box module from WP Beaver add-ons head on over to their website it's a great pack that they're selling you can I think you can get 25% off right now and I can't recommend it highly enough the form styling modules and the modal box are probably worth the cost of the plugin on their own and then you've got a whole bunch of others I think there's 28 29 other modules in there so it's a great buy. I certainly recommend it. And I think that's it for today. Uh, next video, I'm going to give you a little bit more of a, a head on kind of what's the difference between Power Pack and Ultimate. And we're going to explore some of the differences between the two major add on plugins for Beaver Builder. Right now, they're both very, very good options and bring a lot of functionality to Beaver Builder, but I think we should look into them in a little bit detail. This has been a long video. Appreciate your patience. I hope I've helped you. If you like this, please click on like and please share it with your friends. Thanks a lot. And I'll see you soon. Bye now.